My name is Charlie Wood, I'm owner of Grand Junction Brewing Company, uh, co-owner. Uh, John Knight is my partner. Uh, we are here in Westfield, Indiana, uh, just off of US 31. We're going into our uh, ninth year, we'll be nine years old in April. Everybody that comes in the door, we are trying to um, convert them, if you will, show them we've got a great product and a great place and make them want to come back here. I say you do that one at a time. Um, in terms of personally, what I've fostered for that is pretty easy for me because I am very heavily involved in the beer community. Uh, I'm a beer judge. Uh, I'm the, so the director of the uh, Foam Blowers uh, Beer Club. Um, my life revolves around beer, which is kind of sad in some ways, but good in others. I, do, I don't drink that heavily, uh, but I do love every drop of beer that I drink. And so being social and getting out there and going to the beer fest and serving and talking to customers and talking to people um, and when people come in here talking to people and building that relationship, that's, that's how the business grows. Originally, we were on an all-electric seven-barrel system, which just was not efficient at all. We as a company had gotten to the point where we wanted to expand a little bit more, really get our name out there. When it came time to go from our old seven-barrel system to move into a 15-barrel system, uh, it was a perfect time to, to talk with Blickman about doing something a little bit different um, than what they had done before, what you guys had done before, you know, going with a 15-barrel gas-fired system. Blickman is, has been really good about getting back to us, talking on the phone, emails, text messages. That was one of the reasons why we decided to go with Blickman in the first place was it's a local company. We're both Indiana-based. I mean, Lafayette is maybe two hours from here, if, if that. Um, so a lot of it was just working with a local company that, that we knew was close enough that if we did have issues, I think this is the third time Tom has been here. Um, but just, you know, showing face, seeing that they care about their product and they care about their customers. And honestly, one of the best brew systems I've, I've worked on before. I know it like the back of my hand now. I haven't named her yet, but I mean, eventually there'll be one of those days where she gets christened with, with the proper name. Very rarely am I climbing into something with a scrubby or a brush and, you know, hitting nooks and crannies. I mean, just running a CIP on stuff is, so much easier and moving from you know the boil kettle to the mash ton doing CIPs back and forth between those is super simple. Having my assistant brewer John he's been in this industry a long time he used to run a home brew shop so he has seen it on the small scale and he has brewed on 20 barrel brew systems before in places out in Colorado. My favorite piece of equipment are the fermenters. Um, it's a lot of uh, small things that make a huge difference in your day. Um, for anyone who's in the industry, you know when you're trying to uh, keg off a beer, you need to move the racking arm. And if you have a tri-clamp, it gets very difficult to, you always have that fear of that tri-clamp falling off and you know the racking arm coming out, hitting you in the chest and losing your entire beer. So one of the things I like is this feature where you can actually loosen it, move the racking arm where you need it to be, tighten it back down, and you're ready to keg off your beer. You're not worried about it falling off. Uh, you have quite a bit of thread space on there, so it's constantly grabbing a hold, and this is not gonna go anywhere. So, fantastic design. The, number one would be uh, picking the building and location. Um, I would say if anybody is looking at starting a business like this, I strongly recommend that you have a lot of parking, uh, that you've got a lot of space. Um, uh, people like to be outdoors. Uh, make sure you've got outdoor uh, space as well. Uh, we probably double our business when the weather is nice easily uh, because people like to, to sit outdoors and we have events that are out in the parking lot. Um, so I would not suggest trying to open up a brewery in some tiny location unless you're going for something where there's a lot of street traffic, which we obviously don't have here. Um, the other thing I see with a lot of breweries, uh, uh, when they open up, they try to be all things to all people. And I would say, 
that you want to pick a small wheelhouse of beers and focus on those and get those beers absolutely perfect before you start trying to come out with, with too many beers. The wheelhouse uh, for our beers is uh, traditional beers. Uh, we do a lot of European beers um, and we also do um, IPAs. Uh, West Coast IPA uh, is, is one of our flagships. But a lot of our beers are European beers and we don't tend to go into the, um, uh, the fad markets as much. We will never brew a um, sparkling milkshake uh, as an example. Uh, even getting our brewer to brew a hazy is uh, tough because hazies waste a lot of hops and from a traditional brewer's point of view, um, they uh, uh, think, wow, it's just a waste of good hops. Now, we also have to be aware of what the market wants and what people want to come in and buy. So, uh, yes, we, people are constantly coming in and asking for which hazies we have. So it's, it's forced us to bend a little bit that area. But our wheelhouse will remain more traditional uh, beers, um, uh, true beers, Reinheitsgebot, uh, for anybody who's familiar with that term. Uh, water, uh, water hops, barley, and uh, yeast, um, and, and nothing else in our beers. Cheers to all of you out there.